Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for this Father's Day, Lord, and we thank you for being such an awesome Heavenly Father, Lord, that you care about us, that you gave your word to us, Lord, that we could know who you are, that we could feel your love, and we could apply that to our life. And we pray now that you would send a blowing of your Holy Spirit, Lord, just as that breeze is coming off the ocean, Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray you'd use Pastor Izzy now to speak to each one of us, to encourage us, to show us how to know you and walk with you more and more each day. We ask that now in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. 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 Well, guys, would you grab your Bibles and turn to Romans 15? We're going to continue our study through this wonderful letter that Paul wrote to the church at Rome. For those of you uh, that like the little Bible history trivia type thing, this is a church that Paul is writing to. He actually hadn't visited this church. He was, um, in fact, next, next week when we get to the end of the letter, this and uh, I believe it's the book of Colossians are the only two letters we have from Paul in the New Testament to churches that he actually writes to before he visits them. You know, he, he's writing ahead. And, and they're the only two that he writes and names a bunch of people by name, like, you know, greet this person, greet this person, greet this person. We'll see that next week. And, and to the churches that he you know, planted the church or he, he pastored the church like at Ephesus. He doesn't do that. He just gets right to the business at hand. To the brethren at Ephesus, you know, to the brethren. At, but, but for this church, he hasn't visited them. And so you have to keep that in mind. When you're writing to a group of people you haven't visited yet, they know about you and you know about them. You've heard some of the things that are going on. You know, Paul, he wrote last week that he had been writing to them. He says, I've written to you very boldly, he said, about some points. Look at verse 15 of chapter 15. He says, I've written to you very boldly on some points. And he says, and um, just so as to remind you again, because of the grace that was given to me from God to be a minister of Christ to, uh, of Christ Jesus to who? To the Gentiles. Now, he's writing to a church at Rome would be, you know, of course, me being raised in an Italian family, I'd be like, a bunch of Italians, you know. He's writing to a bunch of, but the the majority of them are not Jewish, they're Gentiles. And so Paul, over the last two weeks, we've seen how he says that, you know, while God had called Peter to be the apostle to the Jews, which I find very ironic. I grew up in a Roman Catholic church, and we were taught that Peter was the first pope of the Catholic Church. Okay, now the word Catholic, just to, to dispel any confusion, Catholic from the Latin means universal answer. Universal answer, so the literal, ca- the, the, anyone here have to study Latin when you were in school like I did? Okay, Catholic is just the Latin word for universe, or answer for the universe is another way. I mean, you can't, I'm trying to bring it to English, but it's not that, Direct, okay, it doesn't come across. Eh? In other words, the, the one answer for the whole universe, the, the, the universal answer is Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. And no one gets to the Father except by me. So in the early church, you read the book of Acts, they, they said that Paul was, before he was... Um, called Paul, his name was Saul, and he was out persecuting this group called The Way. The Way. That's what the early church was called. The, you know, what, what are you into? The Way. Now, if we, actually, if we actually introduce Christianity like that, like when I, when I was a young boy, I had a Catholic Bible, and right on the front of my Bible, it said, The Way. The Way. And it was, it was indicating that all of this answer for the whole universe is pointed to this one way. And it wasn't talking about this book. Jesus said, you search this book because you think it's these scriptures that give you everlasting life. It's not this that gives you everlasting life. It's this that points you, what do he say? To me. And in, 
If we want life, Jesus said no one gets to the Father except that he comes through him. You've got to go through the door. And Jesus said, I am the door to heaven. So to get to heaven, this is, a, this is like a sign pointing us in the direction we need to go. We need to go to Jesus, the way. And so the church, Catholic, universal answer for everyone is to be pointed to the way, Jesus. And so Jesus being that way, Paul knows this. He's writing to this, no, if you're a raised Catholic, you know, Peter, we were taught, was the first pope. Uh, by the way, does anyone know when Peter was made the first pope by the Catholic Church? For just a little, 300 A.D. Okay, was Peter alive in 300 A.D.? No, <laughs> he'd, been, he'd been really old by then. Remember, Jesus started the whole A.D., B.C. thing, and Peter was following Jesus as a young man, so he's a few years younger than Jesus. And, you know, we already know Peter gets martyred, crucified upside down. He knew that it was coming. I talked about that before in his second epistle. And Peter's martyred in, I th I don't quote on this, around the 60s to 70 A.D., somewhere in that, in that period. Peter gets, gets martyred. 230 years later, the, the, the church called The Way, well, you know, you remember at that point in history, what, who's ruling the world, by the way? Anyone know the world ruling empire of the time in that? In that from, from, think back, the days of Jesus... Who was ruling the world in the days of Jesus? Rome. And they were still ruling 300 years later. And, and the Romans were, you know, they were into to learning, education, and, and, and they were also into military things and, and, and ruling by power and authority, might. And in this so doing, they, you know, this, um, this per, there was a persecution arose. Again, you guys know this, right? That the church, the way, became greatly persecuted. And the more it got persecuted, an interesting thing happened. What happened to the gospel? It spread. I mean, you, you, you start chasing and threatening the Christians' lives, and they flee for their lives, and they go to another town, right? But they get to another town, and they've got the Lord inside them, and the Bible says that he's that light inside of us. Jesus is the light of the world. And when we get around other people in darkness, but we have the light in us, they go, what's that in you? You have this glow or this light, you know, and you, what are they going to say? It's the way. <laughs> it's Jesus. And so the gospel gets spread, keeps getting spread. And now this, this church, the way, has grown to where it's spread all over. And interestingly enough, here Paul talks about this in Romans 15, that he wants to go visit this church at Rome, even though he's never been there. He's heard a lot about these fellows, and he's written to them, he says boldly about certain points of the, of, of the faith, things that they needed to know about. Even though he said uh, concerning them in verse 14, let me just show you this. In verse 14, he said, concerning you, brethren, I myself am also convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to admonish one another. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.